Hey, my name is Emily Rydell and I'm super excited to talk to you about uh, an aspect of gold mining that you do not see on Bering Sea Gold. So this video is all about the anchor project we did at the beginning of the season. We ripped out the old system and put in a new one this year. There's nothing about our old anchor system that we kept. It was new winches, new fair leads, completely new structural design and all new components. Everything was different. A strong anchor is crucial for dredging in the Bering Sea. Not only do you want to be able to anchor right on top of the last gold bearing spot that you found, but you also have to be able to stay there. And if you have a weak anchoring system, anytime the current changes or the wind comes up, you're getting dragged off of your spot and then you've spent hours and resources to find that spot. So if you're dredging and you get blown even 30 feet off of your spot, you can't get back there and you have to just like wave goodbye to the gold. Also setting is really important. If you can't set in a fluid way and in a fast, accurate way, you're never gonna get back on the gold that you found. And to make this project even harder, there's only a couple of weeks in the preseason between full on winter, ice everywhere, snow everywhere, and then the ice leaving the harbor and you being able to dredge. And that's such a crucial time. You have to get in that water as soon as the ice clears out of the harbor. So you have a very limited window to get a big project like this done. So I'm gonna take you through the process, soup to nuts, how we designed it, how we built it, and how we accomplished it for the season. Special thanks to Lincoln Electric for hooking us up with this awesome welder and the materials to do this project. It's been an evolution. Um, for a while, it was just two anchors, bow and stern, and we'd pull them up by hand. And then we got these electric winches and you know made our lives a little bit easier and over time we added a third fairly at an anchor on the starboard bow so three anchors electric winches all running on a 12 volt system there were a couple problems with this anchoring system the drum winches didn't have enough capacity for the type of heavy chain that we wanted we had to use this like this small like half inch chain the chain really is what helps to keep the boat in place so the result of that not having the right chain was that we'd blow off of our spot a lot a lot, which was incredibly frustrating for the diver. He's worked so hard to get there. And then the minute the current changes, he's gone. So the next problem was that the switches operating the winches were in the cabin. So one guy had to be in the cabin. The other guy had to be on the bow or the stern, holding the line, making sure it didn't backlash, which it did constantly. And then there was just no communication between them. It was just a lot of wild shouting and gesticulating. I mean, setting anchor was so traumatic you'd just be exhausted by the time the anchors were down and you hadn't even put the hose in the water yet so the third problem is that there was no free spool on the winches that drum winch would let the anchor out too slowly and so you'd be trying to set the anchor in a current and you would it, would it would be so slow, it would pull the anchor off the bottom and you'd lose the set. The great thing about free spool is that the line is being let out as fast as you can move. So there's no chance of you pulling the anchor out of position. Top down view on the Eureka sluice box. Are we recording? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. <clears throat> okay, so there's the gold. Here's a cap stand here and a cap stand here. So our big idea was that from this capstan, we can have an anchor going this way, anchor going that way. Same thing over here. So we placed it here on the outside of the boat, and then we built these long chaseways, and that held the chain. 15 feet of 5 eighths chain, very heavy, and the anchors just went on the outside. So the guy can stand right here and operate the back anchor and the front anchor. Here's a side view of the Eroka. There's the gold and the sluice box. So here's a guy standing here. And here's his cap stand. These long shoots are right along this angle. We put in just a bunch of posts to hold it. We could, with this operation, move the boat any direction we wanted. This is kind of what it looked like when we had the anchors, here's our anchors. So 60 pound anchors, 15 feet of 5 eighths chain. And with four positions that the wind could be coming this way and the tide could be coming this way and the boat wouldn't twist or, 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 uh, or swing out of the way. So it kept the diver on the gold, which that's the only way you're making money. Is this typical of preseason, this, this big of a project? 
this is a this is a pretty huge preseason project. And we're gonna have to really rush through it because the time to mine is upon us. But uh, typically, like we'll, we'll have at least one magnum opus project per season. Last year it was the jet and flare, and then this year it's gonna be we're doing the anchor system. The first thing to do was cut off all of the old anchor system. So it was just demolition all over the place. And we just started cutting things off, cut off handrails, and just getting getting the boat clean so that we could design from from the frames up. There we go. The, all the aluminum had to be shipped into Nome ahead of time. So there was a material use plan where we had to design everything and make sure we had enough metal. We got uh, just enough material to do everything we want. challenging corner because we're gonna have to deal with an anchor going over the hose and this hose when we're traveling the hose is up like this when we're mining we're gonna like set it down in the water and it's just a major conflict point and we're gonna figure out how to run the channel the anchor line and the chain over this hose and have it not be a major tangle when we're out in the water or when we're like hauling in gear when it's stormy and that sort of thing all right this is what I was thinking for a build process we set this box up on the single post at the height that we want and then set our chute aiming right at the box and also clearing the hose. So we'll have to get two chutes and like uh, weld them together, clamp them together. And we got this long triangle looking thing and then we just fill in the posts. We just measure up, measure up, measure up and just start filling in the posts. At that point, we basically just keep adding gussets, parts and pieces, and then once we like it, we'll weld it out. We didn't even have to, that's a short overhang, honestly, that's, that's like. That's about the overhang you, know, you want. Six, five, that's four, looks good. It actually has the right length. I mean, that's a big deal. We don't have to, we don't have to add two feet to this thing. First off, we're mobile. We don't have any electricity here, so this Lincoln welder is performing. You just crank it up. It's got all the volts I need to weld uh, these like 3 8 I-beams welding to this three inch box tube. And it's extremely out of position stuff, but that spool gun actually reaches under there really tight. And so no problems there. The only holdup we're having is trying to get parts. So go to the store to get some bolts. They don't have any bolts. Yeah, you, know, you go and you try to get your capstans and they said, oh, it didn't make it on the plane, it's an anchorage. So that's the main struggle. Progress is going really well. Uh, Dan's super efficient, fast, and uh, husband is also. Um, and uh, yeah, Dan and Alex are just ripping it out. And it was a big project to take on pre-season, but it looks beautiful and the welder's doing a beautiful job. And we uh, can't wait to see it out in the water and see how it works. All right, we're all wired in here. So, this thing should be ready to turn. We got our foot pedal. All right, let's see. Oh, yeah. Look at us go. Nothing's smoking or frying in there. This is like a Zoolander. It only turns one direction. It only turns, yeah, clockwise. Oh, no. That's good. It makes the decision making easy for simple gold miners, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's either the anchor is coming up or it's not. Yeah. We are pulling up the anchor for the first time. Is this how you do it? Yep. Cool. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Why haven't we done this before? It's that time of year. Evie's napping. The boat's are splashing.
Oh, she loves when the boat splashes. It's her favorite when the boat splashes. <laughs> Pre-season's done. How's it feel? Oh, yeah. it feels good. Now we're finally, you know, do what we came here to do. Get wet. <laughs> so, we spent all of pre-season working on this anchor project, and now it's time to test the theory. It's time to get wet. You proud of yourself? It's gonna be a lot deeper than that. We're, we're close to the spot that we want to set, right? So in order to prep the anchors, Dan's going to kind of lean the anchors off so that we can make a round haul and we can just go drop, 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 drop. As they sit in the channel right now, they can't just slide out under their own weight. They need a little, uh, some help. So basically, now that we have the new anchor system, we can free spool these things. We don't have to worry about letting anchor out uh, as we drive. So we can just drop them where we want them and pull into our set and it's a lot more accurate and stronger. We haven't messed it up too bad so far. Loosen this, loosen this. Get us in the line. Ready to launch. All right, we're dropping anchors here. Dan's getting ready, and I'm, I'm looking at the GPS, and I'm calling out when we're the right distance and uh, position away from our spot. Drop. Paul just saw a jellyfish. Here's a surprising, uh, unpleasant thing about this job is sometimes a jellyfish will get sucked up into the foot valve and then it'll get mushed up in the pump and pumped into your suit. <laughs> so if you start to feel a light burning sensation all over the place, <laughs> that's a jellyfish milkshake in your suit. So those anchors made an enormous difference in our season. I mean, it was just like night and day. We had so much more control. We were able to go anywhere that we wanted and hold on that spot. And as the diver was following and finding gold, we, the boat was able to keep up with him and keep him anchored exactly where he wanted to be. And the proof is in the pudding. Alex, what are we doing? We're weighing our gold, baby. Oh yeah, how long is this? Two days, three days? This is uh, a few days, 36 hours on the box. Yeah. That's yeah. it. So if we get more than 36. Yeah, we're over an ounce an hour. Over an ounce Which an is hour. exciting. We need a bigger bowl. There we go. Okay guys, half an ounce, nice. Oh my goodness. Um, 15. Oh, 20. Yeah, buddy. Give me north of 30. Come on. Yeah. 30. Buddy. Yes. On the butt. <laughs> Woo! One ounce an hour. hour. Yeah. yeah. Thank Hopefully you for your help, man. No worries. Oh my.